Um, Professor Roland Roth uh, from the University of Tübingen, and he's going to speak about the density functional theory study of bubble gating. Please, uh, Roland, when you are yes. ready, you are start. Okay, thank you very much. I will start the screen and I hope. Yes. Um, I hope this works like we did yesterday. So hopefully you can see my. Not for the moment. Yes, I okay. can see and I oh. can hear you. So everything oh. is fine. You can start, okay. please. Thank you. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for putting together this uh, very interesting and, and, and wonderful event. Unfortunately, uh, we are, well, visiting Rome only virtual, but uh, I think the meeting is, is very interesting and nice. What I would like to do is, uh, I would like to present uh, a, maybe a different perspective on, on uh, uh, well, the gating process uh, of, of uh, some channels. And, and the, bro uh, the, the, the point of view that I have uh, is the point of view of a physicist. So, so uh, I will start with a very different kind of approach than uh, what we have seen so far. I will start by by uh, looking at the phase diagram of a bulk liquid. And uh, we have heard several times before that uh, water uh, under ambient conditions is very close to uh, liquid vapor coexistence. And uh, this is what I would like to highlight uh, here in this, in this slide. This is not the phase diagram of water, not the bulk phase diagram of water. It's, it's a model fluid, it's a square well fluid. And uh, square well fluid usually behaves very differently uh, than water. But there are some properties uh, that we can use uh, to understand and appreciate uh, and, and learn even uh, something about the behavior of water. So what you see here is uh, at a fixed temperature, and this is, uh, say, room temperature, the, the density that I'm looking at, and, and here I, I give the backing fraction, uh, which is uh, corresponds to the backing fraction of water, roughly. Uh, this, this coexisting, or the density of, of uh, water at ambient conditions is very close to the density of um, the, the of water coexisting with water vapor, and this is important. Uh, to understand uh, the properties that follow. So what, what happens when you put water actually uh, in contact with a surface is that uh, you can observe either that the drop is spreading, so the contact angle that you can define between the solids uh, and the interface, the meniscus, is small, or uh, the droplet uh, is quite um, well repelled from the surface and, and the contact angle is large. And the contact angle uh, is either, well, smaller or larger than 90 degrees. And this helps us to, uh, to distinguish between hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces. And this contact angle can be connected uh, to surface tensions. So there's uh, on, on the right hand side, so the, the, the contact angle, uh, this is an observable as you can see in this, in this um, um, picture. It's a macroscopic quantity and it can be connected to the surface tensions which can be calculated from microscopic series. So for example, uh, here you have the surface tension between the liquid and the gas um, interface. Here you have the surface tension between the solid and the gas phase and here the surface tension between the solid and the liquid. And uh, what you can see is basically the the, uh, the convex angle that forms, or the cosine of the convex angle that forms, is a competition between the liquid and uh, the gas phase, uh, because due to these uh, surface tensions. Interestingly, if you study the behavior of, of a liquid close to a single wall, to a planar wall, so this is still kind of macroscopic. Uh, and uh, you, you, you started this with a, from a microscopic point of view, for example, with uh, X-ray uh, scattering. What you can see is something like the following. Uh, 
the profiles that I'm showing here, the, the, the blue line, the red line, these are the density profiles uh, of a liquid of uh, water close to a hydrophilic and a slightly hydrophobic wall. And you can see there's uh, some small differences uh, in uh, this density profile. However, this is the, the profile of uh, the, the centers of uh, water molecules. And if you ask what, for example, does uh, X-ray um, X-rays uh, see in a scattering experiment, it's not not the center of uh, the uh, molecules, but it's something like a, a, a electron density. And you see the difference between hydrophobic and hydrophilic becomes uh, less clear. It, it, it's a smaller distinction between uh, slightly hydrophobic, slightly hydrophilic. Um, one thing I would like to point out is that if you bring uh, the, the fluid in contact with a wall, uh, thermodynamically, you can write uh, the grand potential or a free energy, uh, if you like, uh, in the following you have a volume term. So it's, you have the pressure minus the pressure times the volume of the system plus a surface tension, the solid, uh, the, the, the surface tension of, of, of the fluid uh, or the gas at the solid interface times the area of the uh, interface. Okay. Now, if you look at the total, what you see uh, in a scattering experiment, X-ray scattering, uh, you can see uh, a signal from the wall uh, and the signal of the, from the wall this thing, uh, uh, diminishes as you go into the volume, and you can see uh, a signal from the, the uh, liquid. And if you add them together, so that's what you see in, in, in the, the scattering experiment, you see uh, the, the red line is what you see in the experiment, uh, in the scattering experiment, you see that the difference between hydrophilic and hydrophobic is quite small, and there is no huge gap, uh, as, as was proposed uh, by, by some people a while ago. There's no huge hydrophobic gap. So uh, from a microscopic point of view, uh, you can see that the, the behavior uh, of liquid uh, close to a hydrophilic uh, and a hydrophobic uh, wall well, it's not as dramatically different uh, as uh, one would expect at first. Okay, but what happens if you uh, bring this liquid like water uh, in a slit and in confinement by two walls? I mean, we have seen results uh, or, or discussions like this, uh, for example, yesterday in the dock by, uh, for example, in the dock by uh, Rick Remsing and, and uh, but. This idea has been presented several times already. Now you can write uh, the free energy or the grand potential of your system uh, in the following way. You still have a volume term, uh, but you have two walls. We so have two wall contributions, two times the, the surface tension of the wall times the area of the wall. Now I put uh, the free energy is almost or similar to this because we are neglecting uh, correlation effects uh, in the liquid. So, so if L becomes smaller than uh, or comparable to a correlation length, then, then there will be correlation effects which uh, will change this uh, macroscopic point of view slightly. But there is typically not a dramatic breakdown unless you're very close to, for example, a critical point or other phenomena where the correlation length uh, is very, very large. Okay, now, now um, the volume here is the surface area times L, the, the width of the slit, and so you can uh, factor out the area and see that, uh, that the grand potential is, uh, sh is linear basically in the width of the slit. So now you have uh, two possible scenarios uh, for such a system if you're considering a, a liquid. Uh, and this is uh, the scenario uh, when you have a hydrophilic slit. So the contact angle is smaller than 90 degrees, uh, which results or which means that the uh, liquid um, surface tension at the wall, at the single wall, is smaller than uh, the surface tension of a gas at the single wall. 
and uh, you have two branches, uh, one for the liquid, one for the gas, and there is no intersection of these two branches. This is because uh, we, we are just uh, slightly outside of the coexisting uh, region, so that we have a stable, in the bulk, a stable liquid phase. The gas is metastable at the same chemical potential, and so has a different slope here. The pressure is smaller than in the liquid phase. And the surface tension of the gas phase uh, is higher or larger than that of the liquid phase. So if we switch to a hydrophobic um, slit, uh, basically what changes is here the, 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 the order of the surface tensions. So the liquid surface tension uh, is now larger than that uh, of the gas at the wall. And now you can have a uh, intersection between these two branches of the liquid and the gas branch. And the, the, the value of L where the intersection happens uh, is uh, the, the, the value of L where uh, capillary evaporation uh, of the slit or happens in a macroscopic point of view. So for example, if you start with a white uh, slit and you compress it somehow, you start with a liquid phase as a stable solution in the slit. And then at this intersection point, you switch uh, to uh, a gas phase. However, if the slit is macroscopically large, so if you have an infinite uh, area A, then uh, there, there will be some high uh, metastable states and the, the change will not uh, be uh, immediately happening, but you can have metastable states. Okay, now let's switch to something which is closer to a channel, to an ion channel. Uh, let, let's uh, look at a cylindrical pore. And uh, this is um, now a fluid, the, the, the same square well fluid that uh, should model water, uh, confined in a cylindrical pore uh, with radius r. And now I can make an ansatz for what the grand potential or, or free energy of the system is. There is a volume term. There's an area term, just like before, and then there's a curvature term. And this curvature term, uh, and, and this is uh, maybe some, some connection to the talk uh, of uh, Rick uh, Remsing yesterday, this, this uh, curvature term uh, scales the same or has the same dimension uh, as uh, a line tension term. So, so uh, this is uh, uh, similar in, in, in uh, the behavior, but has a somewhat different interpretation, especially here we have either one liquid phase or one gas phase, so no, no uh, three-line um, coexistence. Okay. Now we can ask what happens when you uh, look at the density profile and you change the radius uh, of the, the cylindrical pore. So if you have a large pore, which is uh, which this um, most outer density profile corresponds to. Then you have a liquid uh, a liquid inside the pore and uh, the density, because we are, we are looking at a hydrophobic, uh, very hydrophobic, uh, in fact, uh, cylinder, uh, the density close to the wall uh, goes to zero. And then now we, we, we shrink this radius and, and we see that uh, at first, the only thing uh, we can observe is that the, 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 the uh, liquid is more uh, shrinked to the smaller area. But you can see uh, at the smallest radius that I'm, I'm showing here, uh, the density profile is uh, a little bit different in the sense that, uh, well, you see that, that there is uh, no, no real bulk region inside the bore. And if I shrink the cylinder just a little bit more, what you can observe is that uh, you jump from a liquid uh, inside the cylinder to a gas inside the cylinder. And if you compress even more or shrink the cylinder even more, then you see just the gas phase in the cylinder. And uh, well, we can verify that this ansatz for uh, the grand potential of the free energy works well in this case. So the, the, the symbols here uh, DFT calculations of uh, the grand potential per unit length uh, of the cylinder. And uh, the line is a fit uh, through the data using this, uh, this form and basically uh, these coefficients. And, and this is 
a point that I would like to emphasize uh, here, and uh, I might uh, reiterate it later on. These parameters, the thermodynamic parameters, the pressure, the surface tension, and this bending energy, they are independent uh, of geometry. So uh, as I'm changing, as I'm changing uh, the radius uh, and, and uh, run a, uh, along this line, basically I'm just changing these geometrical measures, the volume, the surface area, and this integrated mean curvature of the cylindrical bore, while these thermodynamic coefficients are unchanged. I have a second branch uh, for the liquid, uh, sorry, for the gas phase. And in that case, uh, the, the coefficients are that of the gas phase, they're different. And you can see that there's an intersection between the liquid and the gas uh, branch, indicating uh, a, a phase transition between the liquid and the gas. And this is uh, what you see here in the density profiles, but you can see it also here as an intersection between the two branches in the free energy or the grand potential uh, of your system. Okay, this was basically just to warm up and, and to, to uh, well discuss a few ideas from physics of confined liquids. And now let's uh, switch to uh, yeah, the, the gating problem uh, of, of ion channels. Uh, before we do this, uh, one, one uh, further slide uh, which tests somehow the, 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 the model of water that I'm using. So I, I've mentioned uh, the phase diagram, I've, I've shown the density profiles, I've shown so far uh, for squirrel water and of course the thermodynamics and, and uh, the behavior of square well, uh, square well fluid is very different from that of water. Uh, the question is can we still use uh, a square well fluid to predict something useful? And uh, to, to verify this, uh, verify that the bubble formation uh, can be predicted accurately and reliably uh, using this square well model. Uh, let, let's uh, look at this slide here. This is uh, a simulation by Juan et al, um, where they have two hydrophobic ellipsoids immersed in SPC water and in, in, in the simulation where they uh, measure the critical length uh, sigma perpendicular where bubble formation between these ellipsoids happen. And this is what you find there are um, uh, simulation results. There is a fit uh, to, the, um, to the simulation data by Huang uh, for water. And this is the, the, the full line that, that you show, uh, you, you can see here. Uh, that's the prediction of the thermodynamic, uh, morphometric uh, thermodynamics with a square well water, uh, with a square well fluid. And you can see that despite the fact that, uh, for example, the, the surface tensions are by itself do not agree and, and the pressure doesn't agree, uh, the, the prediction where bubbles can form uh, is in a very good agreement between. Um, SPC water and this square well model that I'm using. Okay, now let's uh, switch gears and, and, and switch to uh, a channel. And I'm, I'm using uh, a model of uh, the potassium channel and, and uh, we have seen, I think, this model and, and uh, potassium channels uh, several times. And um, we have very accurate uh, structure of the closed channel and uh, some computer models of uh, what the open channel uh, looks like. And from my point of view, uh, mind you, I, I'm, I'm interested in uh, doing some DFT calculations and, and uh, some thermodynamic uh, analysis of, of the structure. From, from my point of view, what is most curious here is uh, the gating region changes its uh, geometrical conformation uh, when you switch from an open to a closed uh, channel or gate and and this is uh, what i will focus on uh, i will not uh, focus on on, on uh, the uh, selectivity filter uh, and, and in fact i will ignore it completely i will just uh, look at the gate the gating region now the model that i'm using and, and it's a rough one is that uh, this gate is uh, with, with which uh, is formed by these helix uh, structures and, and, and the slide uh, 
across each other, uh, resembles very closely uh, the geometrical shape of a part of a cone. And I will use just this cone uh, to uh, describe the, the gate, the, the geometry of the gate. And uh, the height of the gate will be fixed, the upper, the upper radius, so, so the, the region where it joins to this uh, semispherical cavity here will be fixed. And what I will change is uh, the radius uh, of the lower side of the gate. Now, for this, I can make uh, an ansatz what the grand potential of the free energy uh, looks like. If the gate is open, I will assume it is filled entirely by, by liquid water, by, by uh, liquid, uh, and I have just one phase to consider, and I will have a volume term, surface term, because uh, there's an interaction between uh, water and the protein, and there's a curvature term because this is uh, a curved surface. Again, I would like to point out that uh, these coefficients, the pressure, the surface tension, and this curvature term, uh, curvature energy, are independent uh, of geometry. And all I have to do uh, when I change the geometry is uh, re-evaluate the volume, the surface area, and the mean curvature. Okay, now when I, this is one state, that's the open state uh, of the gate in this model. And the closed state is uh, that there is a bubble forming and blocking the gate. Uh, and now I have uh, a slightly more complicated expression for this free energy or the grand potential of the system. There is parts of the gate filled by uh, liquid, liquid water. And this is the first term. The second term describes, or the second line here describes uh, the, the, uh, the volume, the surface term and the curvature term of the gas phase of the bubble. And then there are liquid uh, vapor uh, interfaces. So there's a, a liquid interface, liquid vapor interface uh, between the bubble and the liquid here. And then uh, outside of the gate, there is another, uh, another, um, liquid reservoir so there's another interface and this is now the grand potential uh, of the closed state when there's a bubble formed uh, and and again these coefficients are the thermodynamic coefficients are fixed uh, and, and only depend on the state so density the temperature and things like that but not on geometry now we can ask the question, how stable is the bubble uh, or under which conditions uh, does the, the, the bubble uh, want to form? As I said before, I'm, I'm changing this radius R2, the, the, the lower, the bottom radius of uh, the gate. And uh, what you can see is here the difference between our the energy uh, of the free energy of the closed uh, state uh, minus uh, the, the free energy of uh, an open state of, of, of the bubble uh, of the gate uh, with fixed or given radius R2. So I can evaluate uh, these, these two free energies. I can uh, form the difference and, and I see, well, okay, if the, the gate is wide, uh, this, this energy difference uh, is positive, meaning it's very unlikely to find a bubble because it costs a lot of energy to form the bubble, while if the, 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 uh, the bottom radius is narrow, uh, the, the F difference is negative, and so uh, it's very likely to find a bubble. So this is, this is um, uh, the, the free energy landscape, basically, uh, of these two different states. And we can translate this if we just assume that there are these two states uh, of the liquid uh, and, and gas in forming in in the uh, gate, uh, just two two state uh, problem, and we can form the probability of finding an open uh, an open channel, an open gate, uh, meaning the probability of finding water completely uh, immersed in the gate. It's given uh, by this uh, formula, uh, which only depends on the difference in the free energies of an open and closed state uh, at a given um, geometry. And you can see this very nice curve, which goes from 
very close to zero in, in narrow channels or narrow gates uh, to almost one uh, when the gate is fully open. Okay. Now, uh, let's just interpret this uh, for, for a second. Uh, and, and this is, um, this is uh, the, the plot that we have seen before just compressed or, or several blocks that we've seen before compressed into one. So if we have an open gate, a wide gate, and, and now uh, I'm using D as a diameter, it's two times the radius that we've used. Uh, the probability of finding um, water in the gate is very high, it's very close to one. So, so we, we uh, this is the picture uh, I, I, I like to have in mind. And what you can observe is that uh, the channel is open almost all the time and uh, is able to conduct current. If, on the other hand, uh, the channel or the gate is narrow, the probability of finding uh, it open is very small and the, the bubble has formed and blocks uh, the, the um, conductance of ions and you see almost never a con uh, uh, ions, an ion conductance uh, conductance or ion current uh, through the gate or the channel. In between, uh, you can see uh, more or less a random uh, signal where, where the, the channel flips between uh, open and closed states. And, and, and this can is reflected by this uh, random reading of a single um, channel in, for example, a batch clamp experiment. Okay. Now, what does this bubble look like? So, so uh, at, at the moment, uh, we have, so far we have used only uh, this very simple thermodynamic argument. Well, here's a bubble in the gate. Here's no bubble in the gate. What does it really look like? So here are two examples, one from uh, recent uh, three-dimensional DFT calculation where uh, I've, I've um, used the geometry um, of the channel um, as, as an external potential for the DFT calculation. What you can see is here is uh, you have a bulk fluid down there. This is an open channel, uh, the, 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 this dark blue region outside here, that, that's basically the membrane where the water can enter. This is bulk square well water, if you like. And you can see that if the, the channel is open or the gate is open and wide, you see a sufficiently high density, even if it's slightly reduced uh, compared to, to bulk um, in in the channel. So, so here you have no um, energetic, um, yeah, energetic hindrance uh, of ions to go into the into the channel because uh, you have um, you have a connection between water. While if the channel is narrow, you can see that there is uh, a region where the density of uh, the liquid is very, very low. There's a bubble forming. It is not, it is not if I go back uh, to this uh, picture, it's not as sharp as in this case. Uh, the reason for this being uh, somewhat fuzzy is that in DFT you calculate ensemble averaged profile. So you average over a variety of different um, configurations, meaning that uh, you also include different shapes of the bubble and average over this. However, we have seen several uh, examples, uh, and, and let me just uh, show you this picture again. We have seen this yesterday in, in uh, the, the nice talk by Mark Sensum. Uh, this is uh, a simulation, kind of an old simulation by Oliver Beckstein. Uh, I think it's uh, from 2004 in in, uh, in, uh, in, in artificial uh, channel uh, or nanopore, but uh, Mark Sensum has shown in several uh, different um, realistic channel geometries uh, that you can find this this bubble formation. Here you see that there is either a liquid inside. Uh, the channel or not. Uh, so this is a little bit different. This is because this is a snapshot uh, of a simulation while this is an ensemble average. So you get different results or different quality of results uh, from DFT and simulations. However, uh, what what you could do from the simulations is if, if you look, for example, at uh, 
at different realizations of the Bohr and average around this, you, you might get something closer to such a, uh, such a picture rather than these sharp uh, differences in the snapshot. Okay, now what can we do with uh, the DFT model uh, uh, of, of the channel? For example, we can do the following. We can calculate something like uh, the Hamiltonian of the gate, uh, meaning what is the energy it costs uh, when we uh, change the geometry of the gate? What is the work that has to be done, uh, for example, by the voltage sensor in order to change the geometry? And this is uh, in, in our uh, two-state model this is very simple to calculate. It's just the probability of finding the channel open times the energy, uh, that is free energy uh, of the open state, plus the, um, the probability of finding the gate closed times the free energy of the closed gate. And this is what you find from this calculation. It is at least uh, uh, semi-quantitatively uh, confirmed by these 3D DFT calculations that I've just mentioned. Uh, the, the details are a little bit different, but what you find is something like this, that if you have a narrow gate and, or, or a very wide gate, you have almost the same uh, free energy or, or, or Hamiltonian uh, for the gate, and it's separated by a potential barrier of something like two and a half kPTs, roughly which means you, have, uh, you find uh, a bi-stable uh, system. So, so the, the, the channel uh, likes to be either open or closed, uh, but doesn't like to be in a state in between. And uh, when it's wide open, it will stay uh, open for most of the time because uh, closing it, uh, you, the, the channel would have to overcome this barrier. Or when it's closed, overcoming this barrier stops it from uh, flickering um, back and forth too easily. Which is, I think that, that's uh, quite an interesting um, uh, result from the DFT calculation, but we can also do the following, and, and this was done uh, in uh, collaboration with uh, Alex Beiser and, and Wolfgang Nonner de Gillespie. We, we uh, can couple, we, we can put, uh, a more complete model of uh, a channel together. We have the gate so far. Uh, now we add the voltage sensors of the system and we couple these and, and, and ask how do they behave. So uh, at the moment uh, here, the, the, the control variable that I have in the TFT calculation is just the radius of, of um, the outer side of the gate. But of course, in a voltage-gated sensor, uh, voltage-gated channel, you have the voltage uh, as a control parameter, which you change experimentally. How can we uh, put these together? So we have now uh, a, a more complete model of the channel where, uh, where we have four voltage sensors, the gate, the coupling between the gate and the voltage sensors. And uh, we can make the following uh, prediction. This is the displacement charge, which can be measured experimentally, predicted by this model. Um, the blue dots here are exper experimental results uh, from this work, and uh, the lines are predictions from the, um, from the theory. The green dashed line here is the displacement charge of only the uh, voltage sensors, so we uh, where, where the um, the gate is not included. But if we include the gate and the coupling between the gate and the and uh, the voltage sensors, then you can see uh, a very similar behavior to the experimental result. So uh, the difference here is that the voltage sensors do not just move as you change. The, the, the voltage across the membrane, it has to do work on the gate and change the geometry of the gate and has to, so to say, squeeze out the water. So this has, uh, this uh, includes um, the, the, the work on, on the gate. And you can see that uh, this uh, moves also the, the voltage uh, that you require to gate the channel in the right direction. Also, you can uh, predict the, the conductance, the normalized conductance of the channel. And the, again, it decreases 
uh, reasonably well uh, with experimental observations. Okay, so this is one thing that, that can be done with, with this model of uh, gating. Uh, and, and, and you can see that uh, the, the uh, probability from the probability map uh, of the voltage tensor that uh, basically uh, you have also a bi-stable system or uh, behavior of the voltage sensors. So for some range of the voltage, uh, the, the, the sensors stay in one uh, position and then the jump uh, to another positions when the voltage threshold uh, is reached. And this is something uh, I think also uh, a very nice result from these, these calculations. Let me uh, just come to, to a, uh, one last point uh, of my talk. And this is the influence of xenon on the probability of finding an open uh, channel. And this is, uh, again, uh, the, 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 the full curve here is the, the behavior that uh, I've shown before, where there's no xenon dissolved. This is just the, the gate uh, uh, in these two different states. Now we add some xenon and the open probability is shifted to the right. So, so uh, this means that, for example, if I uh, choose this value of uh, this radius, um, where without xenon, the, gas, uh, the, the, the channel is open 50% of the time or, or uh, the open probability is one half, you can see it is dram oops, sorry, dramatically um, lowered by the presence of xenon. And uh, well, uh, in 2008, we have uh, published this, this uh, result and, and said, well, maybe this uh, decreased probability of finding a channel open has something to do with uh, uh, the, the action of xenon as an anesthetics. And uh, we have um, seen yesterday in the talks uh, by Gaia and by, uh, by um, Sergei that also in simulations and in experiments, uh, one can see the effect uh, of, of uh, xenon or in the case of Gaia's talk, uh, it was argon, um, on the open probability or the, the probability of finding water in, uh, in, in uh, the gate. But uh, it is very interesting for me to, to see that uh, you can see these effects not only in the DFD calculations, but also in theory and experiments. And there is uh, a very recent, very interesting, very uh, recent um, um, paper by uh, Gaia and uh, um, Alberto Antonio uh, from Rome uh, on this topic. And interestingly, uh, also a while ago, the, the uh, presence of xenon in uh, an, an, an uh, channel was seen experimentally. And time is almost over. Uh, yes, okay. I'm at the summary already. Thank you. Uh, so, so I think what we have seen, what we have seen uh, in this talk, but also in, in several other talks already by by uh, Serge, by uh, Mark Sansom, uh, and, and and others here in this talk is that hydrophobically uh, lined channels can be gated by water. And uh, this, this mechanism is quite general, can work in different um, uh, environments, different types of channels, depending, it doesn't depend uh, of, of, of the gating mechanism. So if it's voltage gated, mechanosensitive or whatever, but uh, it needs somehow a hydrophobic um, region in the gate. And I think the, the, the uh, model is quite interesting because uh, it can ex uh, explain uh, several experimental findings, uh, including the shape of the current reading, and uh, it can somehow explain and, and help to understand the influence of a hydrophobic gas uh, and uh, can help to, um, to, to model different parts of the channel, put these parts together. And uh, one reason why I like the DFT calculations and this morphometric uh, uh, thermodynamic calculations is they're very fast and they allow for a quick scan of phenomena. And uh, I think they, they can uh, supplement and, and add to the pictures 
gained from experiments and simulations. And finally, let me just uh, thank a few people. Uh, I, I've learned a lot uh, about ion channels uh, uh, through collaborations and, and interactions with Dirk Gillespie, Wolfgang Nonner, and Sergei Sukarev. Sergei is here uh, at this meeting as well, and we have heard his talk yesterday. And, and here are just a few references uh, that are related to this problem, including one with Alberto, a recent review uh, on, on uh, heavily confined fluids. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm happy to. Take some oh, thank you, John, for your very nice presentation. And uh, okay, I try to see in the chat there are some questions. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay, in the meanwhile, I can ask you some uh, curiosities. For example, uh, my question is: for example, how do you can improve uh, the density uh, functional theory for including, for example, uh, other effects uh, like? Uh, uh, strong fluctuations of the of the density uh, or interaction, strong interaction with the with the environment. Okay, so so um, the the, uh, the the present model are, is in somewhat simplified uh, compared to to uh, what uh, is done in simulations. As uh, I'm not using force fields in in, in the sense of uh, I'm using a parameterization of how. The protein interacts with uh, water, or water interacts uh, with with uh, other water molecules. But I'm I'm using, uh, so to say, a simple liquid uh, and, and and relatively simple interaction between uh, the, the the protein and the water. This can be uh, it can be uh, well improved somewhat. Uh, at the moment, I think that the biggest problem is that uh, depending on the kind of problem you're interested in, uh, the water model uh, would, would be uh, most difficult to realize in, in DFT. So for example, we can uh, do a water model that, that uh, somehow models somehow uh, hydrogen bonds uh, and, and, and uh, bonding and things like that and gets uh, the surface tension and, and also the equation of state accurately. But it uh, doesn't include, for example, electrostatics, uh, so it, it would be more difficult than to include uh, in, in coupling uh, of um, of uh, this model with with um, with electrostatic potentials or some, so, something like that. But uh, depending on the phenomena you're interested in, uh, I think uh, it, it might be uh, enough to just model. Uh, Get a rough idea of what what water is doing and what uh, protein is doing, and, and, and uh, if uh, this of course excludes somehow uh, a more detailed chemical analysis of uh, very uh, definite bindings uh, and things like that. But uh, I think for phenomena, uh, yeah, you can include these these interactions uh, quite quite mm -hmm. nicely. Sorry, but I had a problem with the with the chat because in, indeed there are uh, some questions. And uh, for example, there is uh, Mahamar Budkabcha who is asking: Are there any effect of uh, temperature on liquid and gas molecules, and also the wall? And what is the relationship between them, if possible? Yes, yeah, so uh, there, there is uh, effects of, of uh, temperature. So, for example. Uh, if you change temperature, you you're changing uh, the the the, um, the the state point you're in. So so you move a little bit away from uh, coexistence. It's a little bit. Uh, um, uh, it, it will change the probabilities of uh, forming bubbles uh, and, and uh, things like that. Um, th this can be uh, included. So so in uh, in the DFT calculations, so it will affect uh, the, the interactions between um, particles, uh, the fluid particles and the wall and, and, and among the fluid particles. It will also uh, change in the thermodynamic considerations, the thermodynamic coefficients, which depend on temperature <coughs> and density, sorry. Uh, but uh, the, the, the overall picture uh, will, will uh, respond to, uh, 
yeah. So, so, so for example, the probability of finding a bubble will change, um, just like uh, it changed when you added uh, the the um, the gas, the xenon to the system. Okay. Uh, there is another question from uh, Charlotte Lynch. She's asking, uh, uh, thanks for the interesting talk. Did you try different uh, XS uh, functionals? How did you model the, si uh, the size of the channel? So the... the, the XC uh, functionals. That I don't know what's uh, the XC functionals. So, so uh, we, we tried different uh, functionals. Uh, I mean, this is classical density functional theory. This is not uh, quantum density functional theory. So, so uh, if XS uh, refers to exchange uh, correlations, then uh, the actual density functional theory. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so then, then, then uh, these effects are not uh, included. However. Uh, these are not important that these temperatures are, and, and uh, uh, the, the, the system behaves classical uh, very, very nicely at these high temperatures. Um, uh, the, the, the way uh, the, inter the, the, the interaction or the, the confinement was uh, included was uh, in two different ways. So in the thermodynamic considerations, we uh, modeled somehow the interaction between uh, the wall and the liquid uh, by a different calculation and, and extracted these thermodynamic coefficients. Uh, and, and this somehow uh, accounted also for the flexibility uh, of the protein uh, a little bit and, and uh, the, the specific interactions. Uh, in, the, in the 3D TFT calculation, uh, the uh, confinement and the size of the bore uh, was uh, modeled by an external field. So, so the, the Protein was an external potential acting on uh, on the fluid, and this was uh, more or less fixed. But uh, again, somehow the softness of the protein was uh, was included uh, by the interaction between the external potential and the, the, the fluid. Uh, but uh, I would have to go into uh, some details in order to explain this more carefully. Uh, maybe we can get in touch. Uh, outside of this uh, talk. Okay, thank you for the exhaustive uh, reply. And I think uh, we can, uh, there are no more questions, so we can thank again the speaker for the nice talk.